Welcome, seekers of wisdom, knowledge, and inspiration. Today's topic I would like to discuss a bit about mythology and about Jediism and what it means to be a Jedi and the type of mythology that we have available. Now, other religions may have thousands of texts available to them. A few do. But most are very limited in their scope of mythological texts. And when I say texts, works, I mean large volumes, large stories, not something that you could record in a page or two in a modern book, but something that would be a modern book in terms of size. Most religions have a few mythological texts that are used for inspiration. Jedi is unique in that we are one of the only, not the only, but one of the only religions to have hundreds of mythological works and texts to provide for us parables and guidance for how to live as Jedi in settings of conflict, in settings of peace, from our day-to-day lives, everything. So with that, what makes us unique in this also is that we don't actually believe our mythology happened. Many religious organizations, despite whatever science, anthropology, or historians may bring up, will claim that their religion is by default correct because of their religious texts and the stories that are within them being definitively true, even if they are proven false through other evidences. With Jedi, we don't have that issue. People can argue who other religious figures are in other religions if they existed, if they were one person or many people, if they are an accumulation of teachings put under the heading of one person, and those arguments happen, and they happen within those faiths day in and day out. We don't have that. We don't ask if Luke Skywalker exists or if Yoda was real. We know that they don't and that they aren't. In fact, if you believe that Luke Skywalker exists or that Yoda is a person, you probably need some therapy at that point. And we recognize that as a reality as well. These figures provide stories. They provide examples of how someone could live a life. And we can emulate that in some ways at times. In other ways, we may not be able to emulate that. And it gives us an idea of the environment in which they were these things. We have a foundation for concepts and ideas that allows us to not have to argue if the person existed for the validity of it. And a foundation for methodologies, training, skill sets, and things like that that often become inherent within religions, within religious and spiritual practices. So what resources do we have? Well, we have over 200 books easily, and that was just looking through the legends and the stuff that have come after. So the legends publications, which used to be Expanded Universe, uh, over 1,138 comics, okay? So That was just pulling from the Legends comic continuity for that number. We have 12 movies, that's counting the spinoff ones, over 200 episodes of various shows. That's a massive amount of media. We also have role-playing game guides. We have various other forms of media, including radio dramas, records that have been created. Just, it's a lot. And when we have this many resources... This means that we have more parables that we can draw from, more ideas, more concepts, more things to look at as to what it means to be a Jedi than most of the other world religions do. That's not to say that some world religions may not have more holy texts than we do, in the sense that they have more books of laws or more books debating what these things are. Add into that that we have dozens of works created by people within the Jedi community 
that show one specific snapshot of how they view it or how a collected set of views at one moment in time was able to be polled on a view of what this is, what the Force is, what Jedi is, what it means, how to be it, all of those things. So how do we use these resources? Well, we have to recognize that mythology is a construct, that everything we have now in other religious texts are translated and modified, changed through storytelling over hundreds of years, uh, and then over thousands of years. So we have to look at our own mythology and recognize it as an opportunity to dive into life lessons, but also as an opportunity to take that against everything that is written down for what it means to be a Jedi. So we have sections from role-playing game guides. We have sections from members' works within the community. We have compilations and things like that that lay out what it means to be a Jedi, what defines right and wrong for a Jedi action, how do you define what you do in a day to walk this path. By recognizing that all of that can be taken and put against the mythology, we can see how the idea of a Jedi is versus what the words may sound like they're saying. So you take the Jedi Code, the most well-known one that is where there is no emotion, there is peace. You take that and it really implies to a lot of people that we're supposed to be emotionless robots. And one very brief cursory look through the movies that have Jedi in them. One brief look through any of the books in which a Jedi is present shows strong emotional ties to the environment, to what's going on around them, to situations, to people to principles, to ideals. This tells us then that it is okay to have emotion as a Jedi. It's not okay to let emotion rule you. So without that mythology, all of these texts, all of the writings, the codes, all of everybody's interpretation, it's all worthless. You can throw it all away without the mythology. Because without the mythology, you don't have parables showing how it works, how it moves how people fail, what happens when they fail, what happens when they fall. All of that ceases to exist when you get rid of the mythology. So the mythology gives us this foundation for living as a Jedi, for what it means to be one. But it's a foundation from very fantastical stories. When we look at this, we see some of those fantastical stories heavily centered around the downfall of the old Jedi and Luke's new initiatives in the Legends continuity. So Luke is presumed to have seen and known all of this downfall was get, has happened, that this had already came before him on some level, even if all he had was a cursory history on what the Jedi were. He knew how the downfall happened. He changed his view of it. This is why... When people ask, should Jedi be able to get married? You know, I'm watching the prequels. I'm watching the stuff that is pre-Skywalker era, pre-Legends continuity. And I don't know if I should be allowed to love. Well, Luke answers that question. He says, yeah, the inability to love, the inability to form those bonds, or the attempt to drive those bonds away, the attempt to drive all of that away, even though it was still present, is what led his father into dueling his mentor to the death on a volcano planet. You know, at some point, we have to look at all of these mythologies and these parables as a greater understanding, and that means most of your prequel stuff is very good for showing you how the Jedi Order fell, how it is that being a Jedi in that way can be self-destructive, it shows you how organizations can fall apart from the structure that was used, how it can be very easy to lose connection to the Force as a guiding flow, as a guiding thing, whenever you are focusing on detachment so much that you can no longer feel your own emotions completely. It gives all of that, but it also does still sometimes give good techniques for working with the Force, a better understanding of what focus means, 
what meditation is supposed to be for a Jedi. So within those things, we have things we can learn, we can pull from, we can pull from certain idealizations, but we have to set a standard somewhere. And, you know, I would say the best foundation I have found for living as a Jedi from the mythology would be the Academy Trilogy and I, Jedi. So you get a good idea of what the training is and what Luke expected after having seen the Old Order fall, what he expected in Jedi training, so that the next Jedi would not be as susceptible to both outside manipulations and internal strife. But you also get a lot of concepts of training techniques. Now, it's true... You're never going to levitate a rock in the air, not a substantially sized one. And I've never seen anyone levitate something in the air. I've seen what I call influential telekinesis. So getting something to move in a way that is in alignment with how it could move under certain circumstances. This is uh, pinwheels and manipulating things already in motion. That's the maximum I've ever seen done or manipulating data in motion. I've seen people manipulate random number generators from time to time. That's probably the maximum level of kinetic work we're going to learn to do outside of maybe large-scale phenomenon. You know, the world's religions are full of people who are able to, at different points, and I mean trained mysticism, influence weather and things like that. We may be able to develop that with enough hard work and dedication and that's kind of my point. These are not things on the same scale as we see in the fiction. You're not going to levitate a jet fighter out of a swamp. You're just not going to do it. It's not within the realm of potential direction of the force as it is in the real world. Likewise, you're not going to block bullets with a sword. So we can draw on the ideas of these techniques. You can amplify your reaction time. And a lot of the techniques that we see in the prequels, the books especially, the movies are okay, they're good movies for what they are. Uh, the books get into what people were feeling, what they were doing, how they were training, what went through their mind, and what they were experiencing when they used the Force. These things can be of value to us in understanding the Force, in understanding the training, in understanding what it means to be a Jedi. So why do people throw the mythos out? Well, there's a lot of concern about it being too fictionally influenced. Um, you know, throwing jet fighters through the air. Later on, you know, uh, Luke moves black holes out of the way because they're inconvenient to him. Uh, pulls a, a starship out of uh, phase time so that it's not visible or something like that. Maybe he just cloaked it. Who knows? Uh, by that point, he's basically a walking god. And I don't mean like what you may have experienced in other religions if you've worked with gods and goddesses. No, I'm talking like upper class, like, you know, pull trees out of the ground and throw them through the air as, as, as a small sign that you're on the wrong path. Not like I had a feeling. Not like, oh, something caught on fire. And I mean, like the forest caught on fire. You shouldn't go walk in it today. Uh, that level of God. That's where Luke is at by that point. There's a lot of concern that these things are too fictionally influenced and that people get caught up in the fantasy. If these stories are parables, that is not a concern. It's not a concern for us because we recognize them as parables and as inspirations, and we keep a realistic idea of what we can and cannot do. As parables, the stories are great. As points of reference of better understanding and growing our abilities and inspiring us to do more, they are fantastic. They are great as a mythology and as a religious text mythology. They shouldn't be used as a reality. And there's that fear from a lot of people in the community that people will get caught up in the role-playing side of it from the fiction. You know, kind of like LARPers yelling, fireball, fireball. Well, I think we've already crossed that line. We have people playing around with toys and wearing costumes, and they call that Jedi. Uh, the fiction has already imprinted itself on the larger community and now people are really what they're saying is i'm worried that someone's going to do something that i don't like with spiritual abilities i'm worried someone's going to advance in a direction i don't approve of 
I'm worried that they're going to offend my religion because I'm a Jedi and I'm this other thing. That's what the real concern is there. And honestly, uh, they can keep that concern for Jedi that follow this as a religion. Don't worry about that concern. Dive into the mythology and really get something out of it. Concerns about copyright issues. I can't quote this work, people say, because of copyright. So you can quote parts of a work so long as they do not represent the whole of the work. So quotes from a character, quotes of a moment, you can usually get away with if you are teaching. It doesn't need to be an accredited school. You just have to be teaching something, even getting a whole page and using it, or at least parts of a whole page to teach a lesson to express an idea. The copyright concern comes from an era when Lucas Entertainment was just shooting at everything that moved and hoping to hit something, and people just wouldn't fight back because they didn't have the money to. It's not a real concern. It's more of a scare tactic, and it's a way of reinforcing this idea of Jedi is this thing we can't define, but we all come together to have different religions and not really be any different than we were yesterday. Uh, it's it's BS. The copyright concern is not a real concern. You just can't put out the works for free. Yeah, people have to buy it. Just like they usually have to buy a copy of the other religious texts and other religions. If you want to study the religion, you'll have to dig into some of the mythology. It's easier to push other agendas without the mythology. Without the mythology... You can push to insert your own mythology, insert your own parables, insert your own ideas. There's no example of Jedi living as Jedi. All we've got is this code and a bunch of tenants pulled from the Wikipedia and reworded very slightly to make us feel better about ourselves. That makes it really easy to push an agenda so that you can replace the Force with something else. You can replace the mythology and what right action is supposed to be how you are supposed to live as a Jedi, how you're supposed to train as a Jedi with something else. Why be what the mythology represents if there is no clear image? But there is a clear image. The Legends continuity specifically had people hired to keep it consistent. So you have this massive area, save a couple of the books at the start that are not even technically in the expanded universe, as it was called at the time. Save a couple of those, you have this massive library of this is what a Jedi is, this is what a Jedi does, this is how a Jedi deals with conflict, this is how a Jedi makes things right, this is how a Jedi moves and acts and determines themselves in the world. And it is hard to push another agenda, it is hard to push the Force out and push some concept of another god, or gods, or power, or nothing, or it's just an idea, when you have a mythology that centers around, no, you got to connect to the Force. You've got to train with the Force. You've got to be capable with the Force. It's really hard to get rid of that, and there is an agenda to push the Force out of Jedi. So that agenda is a big part of this. Uh, it's easier to manipulate new members, too, when there's no mythology, because they don't have anything to form their own opinions on. When you don't treat it as mythology, when you don't say, yeah, these texts are good to learn from, when you go, no, 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 don't learn from those texts. Learn from me. I know what I'm talking about because I've been doing this for a while. Look, I hate to tell you, but if you throw a punch poorly at a heavy bag your whole life, that doesn't give you a good punch. It just gives you a really refined, crappy punch. If you swing a sword wrongly your whole life so that the blade alignment is out, you don't have proper flow and movement. You don't have proper alignment of your body weight and your muscle structure. If you do that your whole life, that doesn't give you a better sword cut. It gives you a very, very refined, bad sword cut. And so this idea of, no, no, go to someone who's been doing this longer. Don't form your own view. Don't draw from these sources. Draw from anything else but this. By pushing that, it's easier to manipulate new members. And it's an insidious move that is used. And the people that it doesn't catch up, the people that don't get caught up in that push, that ever-present expression of opinion that the mythology has no value, 
but what I write does. And that, that goes for anyone who does this. That goes for anyone who does this. That insidious manipulation, it moves a lot of new members who may only have some experience with the smallest snippet of the mythology. They may, they may have only seen the prequels, and they have not seen the original trilogy. They've not gotten to see someone train as a Jedi under, under the guidance of a flawed, well-meaning Jedi Master. They may not understand that this is the guy who watched his entire Republic fall when we look at Yoda, and now he's trying to do better for Luke, but he can't because he's still stuck in his old ways. Without that, even... Yeah, whatever someone else says, if they can just get it to align a little bit with a little bit of mythology that you know, they must be right and you must be wrong. And if you thought there was more to it that you needed to find the Force and explore it and take part in it, well, you just are young and don't understand yet. People get talked down to a lot with well-meaning expressions of knowing the truth, of a better option, and help in finding another religion rather than asking what problem are you actually having on the path and can i help you resolve that internally or find a way to walk it that that does fit within the mythology it's it's so easy to convert people to other religions when everyone is so willing to throw away the force and throw away the ideals and it makes it easier to manipulate new members because without a mythology you have no foundation you have a bunch of stuff that could apply to anyone and I've said this throughout all of this, so I'll only be real brief. They're dismantling the concept of the Force. I I've said it a dozen times. It's very clear. Without the mythology, the Force could be anything. It could just be a pleasant idea. I want you to really think about that. You take the Jedi mythology, you take all the Jedi from all the stories that you can read, okay? You line them all up and you ask them, what do you think the Force is? Do you think one of them is going to say, it's a nice idea? No. No, they're not. Because they've sat down and they've touched it, they've worked with it, they've felt it, they know it's there. And I'm telling you, with the mythology, that guides you to practice as, cer as certain types of meditation, certain types of breath work, certain types of physical movements, and things like that that line up with channeling the Force strongly through you, so that you can feel it. Because it's already there. I should say it channels you to be in tune with it more strongly. But the visualization helps. You take that away, and it's easy to get rid of the Force. You take that away, and the Force just kind of dies. And now, it's just this thing that we got to label. Got to put some words on it, because someone will get upset if we don't. So we tell everyone... It's ineffable. That it can't be defined. That no one has experienced it. Well, we hint that. Um, and it's an insidious plot. It is a manipulation on the grandest scale. And the mythos combats it instantly. You have that mythology there. You know as a Jedi you should be looking for it. So you start to change the way you look. Maybe you hear it as music. Maybe you feel it as senses. Maybe for you, it's a presence of awareness. You just know that it's there. You know a thing within it. Everybody comes to it in different ways. Everybody feels it different ways. So you start to look for that. Because you have a mythology that talks about looking for it. Instead of, you know, just follow something like the code. Whatever. Whatever you want to do. Don't worry about it. And, you know, just kind of follow the tenets. Whatever. And we'll slap a night title on you. Call it good. The mythology is a wall against such thinking. And that's why people want to throw it out. Makes it easier to manipulate new members. Look, this is coming from a Jedi path working, Jedi seeker point of view. Started this channel out as Jedi path working. And quite frankly, Jedi seeker is a way better term. 
but we still have to work the path within it. We have to do that path working. That's what I'm here to help you do as a Jedi Seeker. So I'm helping you today. Dive into the mythos and always compare it to the three Jedi codes and always look at how the lessons in those codes leads to the way a Jedi is acting or in those situations where they fail and fall to the dark side, where it is explicit that they have fallen. Look at where they failed in the code. It's not just that they didn't have emotion. Having emotion isn't what causes the fall. They embraced emotion and passion and ignorance as a form of chaos and death, disharmony, destruction, instead of the force as a guide. That's obvious when you look at the mythos that those situations happen in that way, and it gives you a guidepost to not fall yourself. If I go on any further, this will be a ramble. I hope this meets you all well and good. And as always, may the Force guide and protect you.